Congratulations to you, Jill Haas. So great to see you. I remember looking at you while I was a student here thinking she's a rock star. Such a rock star. Congratulations on being part of this first class. What's it like to be back here in your old stomping grounds and to be part of this first class? Uh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate the uh, honor. And it's different. It's so much bigger. <laughs> and I know you recognize the gym, but uh, it's great. I, the, I love how um, the name of the campus is staying. Even with all the additions. Yeah, it's pretty exciting to be back. Let's take you back, if we can, back to high school years and, and being part of the incredible teams here at St. Francis. Uh, are there any memories that stick out to you in particular? Oh, a ton. Uh, <laughs> when I came in as a freshman, I didn't really know a whole lot of people when I came here. And I just kind of made it. Is that last time? Yeah, last time decision. Uh, didn't go to private school before, and I think I literally knew like, one person. Well, and then played against the number of people, like my whole crew. So it was kind of a little bit crazy, um, but I just remember playing in volleyball and kind of day one, and it was a new, you know, new coach that year as well, who's still here uh, with the land right? And um, just it being kind of, it, because I think she was you kind know, of fresh, but 
my biggest memory is just meeting everyone within that first like tryouts. You know, and I encourage even to this day everyone to go fall sport to play sport just to meet people. But I remember that most of them remember the low ceiling in the gym. <laughs> a lot of times we are inspired by our coaches, right? We want to perform at our highest level when you do have an important coach like your coach, uh, Alinda. What was it about her and her coaching style that inspired you so much? Oh, she's just super fiery. Uh, she's a competitor. Uh, you know, everything was kind of a competition, and I like that. You know, and it's kind of my coaching style as well, even now. Um, it, it's just... She made things fun, you know, and I also love how, it, it seems funny now because her kids are grown up, but how her kids were in the gym. <laughs> and I, I like that though, because that's a sense of, you know, family. And I think that was inspiring. And I have kids and they've been in the gym with my husband and I both coaching as well. So yeah, that's a big deal of what kind of threw my love, you know, to playing and coaching. What from your true view experience have you taken, you mentioned your coach now, have you taken with you into that? Oh, definitely a sense of family. Always trying to create a sense of family, like in the culture of my teams that I coach. You know, um, just kind of just having fun while competing too. I think you know I have Kevin now as well. And they're, they're still here too, and uh, you know, and Karen too. And it's it was always kind of you just felt great with them. You felt like not only were you a player on their team, but part of the family. So I, I kind of try to take that with me too. Jill Hassan. Thank you. Our second inductee tonight is Imani Bakir. Bakir led the safe from led the St. Francis Ten teams to four Delta League championships and four second team section titles as well as the third place finish at State as a senior. She was a two-time Sacramento Bee Player of the Year, was named the team MVP twice, serving as the team captain as a senior. She also won three individual section titles and was ranked in the top 200 nationally by the U.S. Attorney of Tennis as a senior, and was in the top 20 in Northern California by the State Organization. She went on to play collegiately at the United States Naval Academy, where she was named first team all Patriot League in all of her four seasons, and finished her career as the Patriot League Player of the Year as a senior in 2013. She was named to the league's women's tennis 25th anniversary. Monty could not be with her here tonight due to her, due to her work obligations in San Diego, but we congratulate our second inductee, Amani Dutcher. Our next inductee is Sarah Kirk Glenn. Glenn was a three time Sacramento Bee All Metro Selection and B Player of the Year. She won the 1999 Northern California Regional Tournament and was part of four Sacramento Section and CIF Northern California Regional Titles. Team titles. In the summer before her senior year, she won five tournaments throughout the state, including the California State Junior in Monterey. California State Fair Junior Championship and the NCGA National Championship. She went on to become a two-time All-American at UC Berkeley and three-time All-Pac-10 first-team selection for the Golden Bears. She capped off her collegiate career by winning the 2004 NCAA Division I Women's Individual Title and was named the 2004 Honda Award winner. A member of the Cal Hall of Fame, she also played in two U.S. Opens and spent two years on the Futures Tour before earning conditional status on the LPGA Tour. She also has coached at UC Davis and the University of San Francisco. We welcome to the 2018 St. Francis Athletics Hall of Fame, Sarah Kirk Lund.
Sarah, welcome and congratulations to you. We heard just a few of the highlights from your athletic career here at St. Francis and of course on into college. You were part of the golf team here at St. Francis and it was during a really special time. You guys had a number of accomplishments and achievements. Is there one that sticks out to you the most? Man, there's so many good ones. I mean, it's, it's um, when I look back at that team, I think about the team that we had with um, Coach Diane, and I think about how good it was, and it's that's so rare now. I mean, if you think about the players on that team, they, we had five girls that played at Pac-12 schools in a three-year span, which is unheard of nowadays. That's so hard to do. Um, another thing I think that really helped us is we played against the boys. There were no girls teams. Right. And so we were in the league of St. Francis versus Sac High, JFK, all those schools just playing as boys. And there's no And you won. Let's not forget. Some of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very awesome. Uh, you mentioned that Coach Diane also, very similar to Jill. Talk about, you know, the, the importance of coaching. You mentioned uh, in, in your interview with Steve that you think that people that go on into coaching they do so because they had great coaches growing up. You said you could name three of your best favorite coaches, and two of them were here at St. Francis High School. They were, yep, they absolutely were. So obviously, Coach Diane Nager um, is one of them. Another one was Coach Frank Conti. I played basketball here. Um, and I remember very specific game scenarios and him coaching me that, that made a difference, I think. And then also my coach at Cal. Um, and I think that when I decided that I wanted to become a coach, those were coaches who I wanted to, I wanted to coach just like them. It was, it was kind of like a tough love, but at the same time, a kick in the butt because that's what I wanted and trying to get your players and motivate them. Um, and so I learned a lot from those three coaches. I want to take you back to 2004, right? We talked about a very special week. I think um, there were some decisions that were made for you, I think, along the way, right? You had a knee injury that then led to your golf career. Um, 2004, when you won the uh, championship there, you were, you said you were kind of off your game, and then something happened, and it was amazing, and it was a game changer for you. Definitely. It was, it was, um, back in 2004, I had a rough spring season. I, I was selected to the national team, and I was really nervous about it. Okay. And so I didn't play that well throughout my, my senior year, college spring season. Um, and then I came to the national championship and, and our team was really good. And it was kind of like lightning strike, right? I mean, I had 25 birdies over the course of four rounds and I averaged two and a half per round. So it was, it was a, a really fun week. And I remember afterwards, my mom said to me, she said, why can't you just do that all the time? <laughs> of course. <laughs> it was one of those weeks, but something that I'll never forget. Um, and something that I try to teach all of my players, I think, too, because I didn't win a whole lot of college events, but I won the biggest one. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like it, you just never know when, when it's, when it's going to come, but you put in all that work and eventually it does. And it changed your career? Absolutely. Yeah, and that's when I kind of decided that um, I wanted to play professionally and give it, a, give it a go in my last tournament of my senior year. Because I had friends, I think, leading up to them and said, I want to play professionally. And they put so much pressure on their senior year in college to, to want to do that and come out ready to compete against professionals. And, and I didn't want to do that, but I also wanted to make sure that I still loved it when I finished my college career. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a special recognition at this time as our first inductee in our contributor category, Dottie Brandenburg. <laughs> Dottie is going to be part of the set of St. Francis varsity softball scorekeeper for the last 35 years. <laughs> Starting with her first daughter, she's part of the freshman in 1983 in the first season and continuing every season since. Dottie has been on the book. She is a dedicated, tireless supporter of the program, its players and coaches, cheering from the sideline for Booth. Coaches and umpires across the region know Dottie is a constant fixture in our scorekeepers booth at St. Francis, and nothing has kept her from being at the games. Welcome to the 2018 St. Francis Athletics Hall of Fame, Dottie Brandenburg.
this out? What made you start doing this bookkeeping? Each of them 
when I was doing them. <laughs> because in volleyball, it was a great team. We had a wonderful team. And I got to jump as high as I could and hit the ball and, you know, as hard as I could. Basketball was wonderful because it was truly, truly a team sport. But then in the spring, when I got out to the high jump, there was just something about the warm weather, it just the air and grass. I think that was probably my favorite. <laughs> Let's talk about that high jump. You, you started really at a very young age, fourth grade. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd have the career that you ended up with? I never, I never did actually. Um, I did start in fourth grade, and um, the gentleman who started me high jumping is here tonight, Gary Berlinger and John McCray. They were the first ones. And um, it was really an amazing thing because we were out on the blacktop at St. Mary's School, just down the street, and they dragged this pit full of stone pieces out, and it was connected by some mesh with some rope on the end or something. And they brought a big triangular metal pole out. And I'm thinking to myself, am I supposed to pull all over this? What am I doing? And he said, no, you high jump. And I thought, what was I thinking? Metal pole on a pit that had <laughs> holes in it everywhere. You had to know where to land. But it was, um, it was a really tough start. But it turned out to be a wonderful experience and got me a wonderful education. I'm so grateful. Can you take me back to the state championship? Did you realize, after taking your turn, the magnitude of what had just happened? Not, not really. I knew, I knew it was a good jump. Um, I had um, a lot of support there, and but it was just a jump. It was just another jump, really. And when you when you make a jump like that. The next thing you think is, okay, next time, let's go, let's go. And it wasn't, it wasn't anything different. I just psyched myself out, you know. Wish I could have taken a little more time or done a little thing, you know, a little thing here or there differently. But it all worked out. It was a wonderful experience. We can always find something like in your own little And now you're back here. Your daughter is here, right? You're still getting involved. What's it like to, to now see your daughter walking these very? Well? It is such a blessing to see her. She has. Um, she, I'm so lucky that she has the sisterhood, the experience of having being a Truby and having that sisterhood that I enjoy. I still have my Truby sisters here, Molly, Colleen, you know, they're, they're still here and it's just, we're all still very close and it's just really special to be back. And my husband and I are here a lot. We have a lot of activities here. We enjoy them, doing them very much. It's just our way of getting back and it's a very special place. It really is. Thank you. Our next inductee is our first selection in the coach category, Diane Nager. Coach Diane Nager led the Troubadours to the stretch of six Sacramento section titles from 1997 to 2001 and five CIF Early California Regional Team Titles. She was named the 2000 Sacramento Bee Coach of the Year and coached the 2000 Sacramento Sacramento Bee Section Champion Kim Welch and two Early California Regional Champions, Sarah Heard and Welch. She was also an assistant in 1997 for the program. Welcome to the 2018 St. Francis Athletics Hall of Fame, Diane Nader. Coach, at what point did you realize that you really had a special team? 
team, and it was really a special time for this team here at St. Francis. Well, it was always special. My daughter Christy was on the uh, team when I got started, and that's how I started uh, getting involved in the team and going out the story and assisting with the coaching. One of the things that I'm most fascinated by is early on, and you mentioned this, that the team played boys because there, there wasn't a, another girls team. It was the first rec girls recognized team. Talk a little bit about the early days and, and, and then developing the girls program. Well, they, they, they played the boys and um, the boys weren't used to playing the girls. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of had a couple of little techniques. We would always make sure that we tee off first on the first tee and then the boys would get up and pull it off to the left. So we had that one figured out. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, it was early on and you had a somewhat of an aha moment um, with an encounter with Debbie Meyer. Can you talk to Debbie Meyer? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, one of my first swim coaches was Debbie Meyer, so Pedro Del Lara at the time, and I loved swimming. My best friend was a swimmer, and so that's how I got into the sport, but I was just there to have fun, and um, I think she saw some talent there, and I remember her saying, maybe you could be a good swimmer if you really worked at it, and so it was an aha moment that I, I never really pushed myself and thought, oh, you're supposed to get tired.
so good to have you up here. I'm going to just take a moment today, a little personal note. I happened to be in school during that time, right? Because I'm class of 95. And I remember cheering you on and just thinking, these are rock stars. I mean, just awesome, incredible athletes. And when I think about my daughter, right, and her wanting her to play sports, I do think of you. You know, you guys were awesome. And so I'm so, so thrilled and honored to be here with all of you today. Congratulations on such an accomplishment. Um, doing it 
we were all committed to the goal, but we all enjoyed our company and playing together. And I think that's the part I keep telling I don't remember that. But I remember <laughs> that part of it. I remember how much pleasure it was constantly. And I think a lot of competitive sports cannot provide that. It's right? a lot of stress and struggle. This was fun. This team, I, I've got something to say about this team. Because, uh, <laughs> let me just say, you know, it, it's going to sound cliche, but they really were. Like, there was no selfishness on this team. And when Christine and Minnie talked about how they were a family, they were a family. And Dave mentioned Andy's comment about one day on six to go, but I do remember there was a time in the locker room, and these girls were talking and just said, we are not going to lose because I want to see you tomorrow at practice. Like, I don't want to have a time when we're not together. And that's what really stuck out for me, is that these girls were just, they were in it, all in it, every single one of them together. And just, I would love to add that Jerry Poole was with us for several years leading up to this, and then he left us, and it was, we were primed to play and win a championship, and Dave came on board, and we're like, you're on board, we're gonna do this. Mm -hmm. And he was on board, he brought something that we didn't have as a team before. We had, we were a very aggressive, defensive team, and he was committed to continuing that, and this team was committed to doing that, but he brought an offensive element that we didn't have before, and so he helped us in that last leg transition to being a really competitive offensive and defensive team. And champions. And champions. Let's go back to that night, all right? Here are you, we were in this small gym here at St. Francis, right? And you're now at Oracle, right? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a big stage, right? So let's talk about that night and what that was like. Baby, <laughs> We all had, we needed some good luck and we had these band-aids that we wore on our left knee, so every single game look in our um, photo album over there, you will see that all of us have, there they are, <laughs> we had a band-aid on all of our knees. Yes. Goodness, I love that. All right, well, thanks to Selena and Mama Murphy. We've got a little, little history here. Is this not fantastic? This is from the Union. Okay. I'll show you the front page, even though we're not on it, and we won. I say it because I feel like I'm a part of this team. Um, <laughs> uh, but this is back, um, right, in, uh, see, I don't have glasses, I apologize. Uh, but this was the day after, right? And there you see Judgment also played before. You'll notice their photos in color. And they lost. But here we are, Troubadours take to the air. How awesome is that to see this, right? And all these years later, uh, certainly does, um, show the changes that have happened in women's sports right over the years. But what's it like, you know, to see this again all these years later? Okay, what I remember is that we went to Jesuit after this to celebrate. It was very uncomfortable. Our victory and their loss. <laughs> I like it. Do I hear a story? I want to hear, um, you know, another memory from that year, that night. Um, I want to know, you know, the buzzer goes off and you realize we won. We just won. All I remember from that night is I literally don't remember a scene from the game or the sports. But what I remember is the buzzer going off because it was a fairly close game at the end, and literally being our whole team running onto the court and being bottom of a pile of our 12 to 14 team members and our six coaches like on top of me like on the ground for about 45 minutes. I think they're pushing us off the court so they can start the next turn thing. All right, fantastic ladies. Thank you so much. Congratulations.
thank you all very much. Again, it was such an honor to be here today and to be part of this the very first time. So maybe I'll see you next year. I want to thank you, Lisa, for helping us out tonight. It was a wonderful job. You know, I was telling Teresa, you know, we want to ask you all the time, but we don't want to overstep the, the line there. And I always say, I am so proud to have been here and be part of this school because I think we've heard the meaning. It's such a sisterhood, it's such a family. And I love this place, and I'm always going to be a cheerleader. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth. Lisa Ortiz, a woman who's changing the world. I thought she was going to talk about when, when I meet alums that were there when uh, the basketball team won it, the first thing they say is we got a day off school. <laughs> she said we got a day off school. <laughs> so they were all in debt to, uh, to you ladies for that. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. I want to start with our inductees. Our mission at St. Francis in athletics uh, is to empower young women through sport. And uh, we uh, use sport to facilitate uh, physical growth, intellectual growth, and spiritual growth. And um, that is, we do it in a competitive environment. And so tonight, we honor the, the people that are inducted, and we, uh, and that's what, uh, I mean, these women have, I mean, you've all heard the story, that just amazing achievements. And so it's, it's proper to celebrate that. But the other part of that is, and if you look at the beautiful display that we have out in the foyer, is to inspire the girls that are here now. And so we were very careful to have dynamic pictures and a narrative, so it's not just a name and a face and a year in sport, but they can learn about what the women did and be inspired by that and then write their chapter, the next chapter in Tribute History. So I want to thank you, uh, all the inductees tonight. Thanks for coming back. It makes a big inspiration to our Tribute now. Uh, a quick uh, a few thank yous as well before we wrap up, and I invite you to hang out and enjoy your time back here at St. Francis. Uh, I want to thank the Hall of Fame Committee, which included Jay Gore, our SAC president, that was here uh, to start our, 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 our prayer. Uh, Dana Bueno is our faculty member, also our PE chair. Uh, Marianne Kelly, a staff member, uh, leader of our advancement team. Kevin McGuire, our current coach. Mark McDermott is our uh, community uh, community member. Uh, many, many of you remember his bylines in SAC B. It was extremely helpful uh, getting some of the back uh, the research and the uh, uh, you know the pictures and, and giving us the names that people consider. Ken McGuire, uh, current coach, and of course uh, St. Francis dad. Uh, Don Winston, who is our alumni. Shaft, our chair for sports information. I'll end with him because so much of tonight is really uh, Steve's hard work. Uh, our advancement team, again led by Mary, uh, Mary and Kelly, uh, Christina Ebby, De 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 and Ronnie Bernisi. Uh, a huge help. This was a, a partnership between advancement and athletics to finally get this day here. Uh, our booster club, and uh, we'll, we'll hand it over to Mike here to Karen in a second if she wants to say something. Um, our Epicurean team for the amazing food, uh, Roberto and Evelyn, an always an amazing job. And then this, these are the folks that cook for our girls every day, too, so it blows, that blows me away. We're, we're so lucky and blessed to have them. Our facilities crew, headed by Ed Schmidt, uh, Bill Hammerhan, Bruno Chamberlain, and, and Dane uh, Villalone that's here tonight. So much of the, the swag uh, this all set up with our volunteers. And of course, the athletics department. I'm extremely proud of the athletics department here. Uh, Kelly Ketchum, our assistant AD for sports medicine. Um, and, uh, tonight, thank you for everything you do and helping for tonight. Uh, Heather Moody, our business operations person. Kenny Guire, I mentioned before, our facilities coordinator. And I'm going to end with Steve Schaff. Um, Steve Schaff, we are very blessed here. We have a sports information director, over 20 years experience at the NCAA. Um, this is an alumni group, so I want to speak to that. You know, um, about seven years ago, we proposed the idea of having sports information director. It's a collegiate model, uh, but it's something that I think makes a lot of sense for a school like ours to, to celebrate all the amazing achievement that these girls do every day in athletics and have a professional that uh, that's their professional identity in communication. So all the stories and the photographs and, and the social media um, check out GoTrees.com that we launched in, in the fall. Uh, but tonight, so much of this research, he's the one working with the families, gathering the pictures, gathering the stories,
to read the bio um, and to uh, you know properly celebrate these women that inspire our firm trees. And so, can we give a, a round of applause for our amazing sports information director?